All right, we're in a Nissan this time, and uh, customer's complaint is service engine soon light on, uh, and the shop that I currently work for installed a Jasper engine in it in 2016. Um, I looked up the history, uh, they did that, and previous to that, it was replaced for uh, timing chain issues. This is a uh, 2004, Five, two thousand, yeah, two thousand five Xterra with the four point uh, two wheel drive. All right, so we're in. We'll go ahead and read codes. Uh, hopefully, this isn't a really weird one. Uh, Variable intake air solenoid circuit, uh, P eighteen hundred, and P twelve eighty three air fuel ratio sensor bank two, which is driver side on this car. Uh, and actually, interesting enough, Autel gives you that there's a six time occurrence and then there's a current code on the VAS. So we'll go ahead and uh, the VIAS stuff we'll have to do in a bay. Um, so I'll get a separate video for the P1800 code. Let's go to the P1283 because that's more common in this car. Uh, I believe there's actually a TSB for this particular vehicle um, about the exhaust shield bolts that go through the catalytic converter. Uh, or they go through the exhaust manifold. They actually thread all the way into the exhaust manifold. Um, I did look at under the hood of this car because it had the Jasper installed and all of them were there, whether they're tight or not, I don't know. So let's go through and do scan data information to see if we can isolate where our issue is uh, via scan data. Uh, so we'll go into live data We'll go to all signals because I just kind of want to see everything first. Um, anytime I have a drivability concern or check engine light that has to do with anything emissions related, which is pretty much anything a check engine light, that's what it's there for, I will almost always look at fuel trims just to give me an idea. Uh, Nissan uses alpha fuel trims. So most of you guys, if you're not used to looking at alpha fuel trims, you'll see 123%, holy crap, 96%, holy cow, it's way, way high. So 100% is actually zero. Um, and then below that is a negative fuel trim, above 100 is positive fuel trim. So right away we noticed that we're getting a 120, so 28% positive fuel trim on bank two. Um, we'll idle up to 3,000-ish, hold steady. So, at steady 2750, it goes to about 113. Let's graph that because I want to see. That kind of gave me a little more insight than what I was thinking. So we'll set the minimum and maximum. I want to see it from 100 to 125. All right, so we'll go. to 130. So you're able to set the minimum maximum amount on the Autel. If yours doesn't have that, then you don't have a updated enough version. Um, so watching the short-term fuel trim, which is what this alpha is, uh, we'll, we're at 130-ish at idle. And then you'll notice when we raise the RPM and hold, it gets really close to zero within nine or ten percent and then it settles off at a higher number so normally when you have a fuel trim and you've got one that's got a high fuel trim it's adding a lot of fuel uh, compared to what it's sensor wise is reading um, at idle and then it pans out closer to zero under rpm you'll you'll want to look for a vacuum leak uh, somewhere post mass airflow sensor um, now what's interesting about this is it pegs down closer to zero and then settles back around in the middle. And I see this a lot on these with this particular code um, with exhaust leaks. So we're back to kind of that TSB area. Um, but I know the exhaust bolts were there. I look at that on these all the time, especially when I have a check engine light. Just like, I usually pop the hood and go, hey, has there been a fire under here first? So I, we're gonna go ahead and look at Auction sensor data first. Oh, there we go. They're actually both right there. So, we've got our lambda sensors up front, and we got our rear O2s there. Sorry, I'm 
I may seem like I'm not reading it, but I'm actually just trying to keep the screen on there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and graph all these first. Pull them all out. I kind of like to see more history on them as I'm doing this. It gives me more of an idea versus what I did for the RPM. So I'm going to turn off the X axis. Give myself more time on the screen per division. All right. So the front ones, um, I believe one, four, five is the is perfect lambda voltage readout on the OE side for Nissan. If you're reading the front air fuel sensors. Um, so you notice that on bank two, which is our suspect bank, the 1283 code, that we have um, some fluctuations that are a little more drastic than bank one. Um, and then we'll notice our rear O2 sensors, our bank two is swinging from zero, near zero to near 0.8. So that would be normal operation for a non lit off catalytic converter on that bank. Uh, and then we have the bank one, which is was kind of hanging around uh, the point point seven eight, um, and then trailed down and, and over. And you see this? There's there's two things that are happening here. Either either the bank one cat um, kind of lost some of its ability to absorb oxygen, or or it's going through a self check. And a lot of PCM strategies will do that. They will they will temporarily mess with and you'll see this doesn't look like that quite usually you'll see something very sharp it'll it'll quickly drop and then you'll see it do its normal reading back up and it almost looks like an electrical loss of voltage because it's so straight when it drops down and really all that is the pcm is going through a strategy doing a check to make sure that it's not stuck in one position if it if it thinks the bias of voltage between a certain time base hasn't moved enough for what it should be based on engine conditions then it will sometimes drop fuel on that side or increase fuel on that side to self-test the oxygen sensor, and that and that PCM information is is usually proprietary, so you don't get information. You don't really get information from the manufacturer on when that's going to happen or how you can force it to happen. Um, or in this case, what I think is happening is just the catalytic converter isn't able to store all the oxygen like it's supposed to at idle, and and that's and that's probable for the age of the vehicle. This thing's got 172,000 miles. It appeared to have original catalytic converters, which on its own is a feat for Nissan. Um, so, and and you may hear me reference oxygen sensor voltages two different ways: lean and rich, which uh, is the is the predominantly used terms for lower voltage and higher voltage. But realistically, what oxygen sensors are doing, not air fuel sensors like on the at the front, but realistically, rear O2 sensors are reading just that oxygen sensor. They read the amount of oxygen. So less oxygen, more oxygen. Now that that normally under most circumstances means lean and rich. So you may have me, you may hear me use the terms interchangeably between lean and rich and more or less oxygen, uh, just to explain that. So what I notice is that the bank one cat is staying lit off at idle a lot of the time, and the bank two cat has almost zero activity based on uh, on its ability to store oxygen. We're seeing the fluctuations swing but drastically more than what i mean about about where they should be for a front lambda sensor seeing it move to bank two and you notice there's significantly more fluctuations here which makes to more fluctuations on bank two and that's because we don't have good fuel control so we have a lot more movement of the the actual air fuel ratio on that bank because we don't have good fuel control uh, on bank one where we had good fuel trims or we have good fuel control between air and fuel ratio we see it's fairly steady before the cat and then after the cat the cat's doing a fairly decent job of absorbing oxygen and maintaining it so we're up we're up above that that 0. 0.6 voltage um and if we were to force it into a position to where it should be doing its job better like at higher rpms where it's got more heat to become a catalyst and we hold it there we would hope to see the oxygen sensor absorb more oxygen so we would have a higher voltage or less oxygen within that stream after the catalytic converter which you see it went from about a 0.6 voltage up to about a 0.72 or three, which is normal. That is that that is a catalytic converter that's doing its job. It's absorbing oxygen as it should. So that's not what we're testing for. And you notice on bank two, it does the same thing when we raise RPM. So that tells us the catalytic converter probably works, whether its health is good or not, we don't know. Um, and then 
from that point, we're gonna go and pay more attention to what's happening to this bank two that we're having an issue with. So you notice coming off the throttle, we have a sharp decline down to near zero volts. Um, so if we look at the two auction sensors by themselves next to each other, now the, the total scales are off a little bit. There's a negative two down here. Oh, oh, did we get bank? Oh, bank, that's bank one, sorry. Bank one is a blue line, zero line. So what I'm noticing here is if I RPM up, we're watching the green line really, and hold and let off, we get a sharp decline. Sorry, I'm just watching some data here as I do a couple tests that I want to see. Hold it at 4,000. All right, so our oxygen sensor voltage will slowly climb to a higher, to a higher voltage under higher RPM held. So I know this is kind of confusing. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not the best teacher at this. I'm just trying to give you guys how I, how I do this test. I, I wish I was as good as some of the other guys out there teaching this, but I'm not. So what I'm noticing is a slow increase to its steady voltage at the point, like a slow responding oxygen sensor. But what I noticed the most is because of this code and the fact that we have these higher fuel trims, the or the fuel trims that are higher, and then we'll settle down closer and settle in the middle, plus the slower responding oxygen sensor, and then it wants to swing back and forth wildly. I, I will almost bet you that we have an exhaust leak. Um, probably between, the, it's gonna be between the two auction sensors in order for that code to, to come up. So let me get this back to the shop, get it up in the air and we'll inspect the system and probably smoke the exhaust if we don't see anything automatically. I'm not hearing anything. Um, so we'll get it back to the shop, get it lifted up, go for a visual inspection and then go from there. Um, but that's what this really looks like. Cause I can get this cat to light off and hold and it seems fine. But once we get out of the RPM and out of the heat, it wants to go back to switching wildly. It's the O2 sensor, the rear one is slow responding back to, to a steady higher voltage when it happens. Um, what that tells me is that the, the catalytic converter can, can do its job when presented with the right amount of air fuel mixture inside of it to actually catalyze. Uh, but then off of the exhaust, off the throttle or off creating less exhaust pressure, uh, it looks like a large amount of raw oxygen is getting into the exhaust based on what I'm seeing in the O2 sensor data. We're gonna go ahead and get this back to the shop. I went out for a test drive to get heated up. I thought I'd pull over and just throw a quick uh, video of this up. Luckily I had the GoPro with me because I hopefully planned on doing something with a few of these cars today. Um, so let me get it back to the shop. We'll lift it up and take a look. All right, we got the vehicle back to the shop up on the lift. I'm holding up a piece of paper towel next to the uh, crack I found at the front of the converter at the weld. You can see it fluttering around a little bit. That's uh, that's for me trying to visualize for you guys the crack I see along with the, uh, the blackened area at the front of the weld. Now, if we compare it to the other side, we can see that uh, the other weld is completely intact and looks normal, and it's a lot easier to see the, uh, the problem we see with the other one by looking at the two compared. So um, from that point, we're gonna recommend replacement of the converter and go from there.